Hello everyone, it's great to be here today. My name is Odelia Tortman and I'm part of the Digital Transformation and Investment Team at IFC, the International Finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank Group and the largest global development institution focusing in investment within the private sector in emerging markets. And today I want to briefly thank you through the Israeli fintech industry, what makes it the world's fourth largest fintech hub and some of its unique features. Now, in order to understand the Israeli fintech industry, it's important to first realize the unique innovation environment it has developed in. So Israel has always invested substantially within R&D initiative and it today has the largest R&D investment as percentage out of the country GDP globally. It has the highest number of startups per capita, where currently we have today over 7,000 startups and the highest number of venture capital per capita. And because Israel is such a small market, many of the startups in Israel are launching their product with a global first approach, meaning targeting to pursue other markets outside of Israel as a first stage from the company's earlier states from one hand, and from the other are also very open to specific clients' customizations. And all of that have basically made home made Israel at home to more than 350 multinational corporations, technology leaders and different global corporates, all are basically in search for cutting-edge technologies and innovation here in Israel. And within this context, we currently have 529 operating fintech companies, raising in around 84% from the number of fintech companies back in 2014. Now, the fintech companies in Israel are operating in diverse fields and in diverse, basically, areas offering different kinds of solutions. But the main subsectors with the highest density of companies are the trading and investing, payments, enterprise solution, different risks and anti-fraud solutions, insurtech, and lending and financing. And that, just to touch a bit about those subsectors. So the largest subsector is currently the trading and investing with around 122 companies offering all kinds of solutions from FX to digital assets and to all kinds of creative portfolio investment solutions, data analytics and others. And the reason why this subsector is the largest is basically heavily due to the huge surge in blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies development we saw in Israel during 2017, leading to the fact that almost 50% of the companies operating under trading and investing in those years developed their solution based on cryptocurrencies and distributed ledger technologies. The other subsector worth mentioning is the enterprise solutions, where under this we have companies that are not relevant solely for the financial service industry, but due to the current features and conditions that financial institutions are facing with these days, being the changing customers' expectation, the changes within the way services and products are being consumed, the entrance of non-FSI players into the financial service industry, players like Facebook, Google and Amazon. And from the other hand, basically the fact that those financial institutions need to digitize now even more than before their infrastructure and their basically core legacy systems are pushing them further toward basically the digitization journey and are making solutions in those categories to be much more relevant than ever before for them. And solutions under this category includes different kind of legacy integration solutions, cloud migration, database optimization, customer engagement, and others. Another subsector which is very interesting and important to mention is the insurtech. Now, the insurtech industry in Israel have attracted a lot of attention in recent years and have also attracted many global players to arrive to Israel in search for innovation. Players like Swiss Re, Munich Re, Allianz, Aviva, Sompo, Tokyo Marine and others have all opened some kind of branch or activity in, in, in Israel in search for different innovations. And basically solutions and companies that are operating in those fields are in areas such as digital insurance, cyber insurance, telematics, IoT, wellness and health, and of course everything around claim management and analytics. And we are expecting to see basically much more companies operating on those areas. Now let's just basically take a step back and look at the wider fintech ecosystem in Israel. Financial institutions in Israel are relatively open to innovation. And open to innovation both in the sense of building all kinds of collaboration models with different fintech startups, as well as working quite fiercely on their own digitization and modernization journey. And if to state as an example the three largest banks in Israel, it's interesting to see how each one of them has basically embraced a very different approach. So Lumi, for example, launched in 2017 Pepe, its standalone digital bank, which is a smart mobile bank, which represented only the first step 
in Lumi's largest digitization journey, which goes all the way to their core. Banca Poalim, as an example, developed a different kind of payment uh, app, which is called BIT, that enables the P2P transference of payments between different contents and unable to receive and send money using the contact list on your mobile phone. And Banca Poalim is also basically entering currently in the last few years towards a wider modernization project and is also collaborating with a lot of other uh, fintech startups. On the other hand, Bank Discount, the third largest bank, has basically started and issued a different approach where they have started working with an existing fintech startup called Paybox, which was eventually acquired, the operation in Israel was eventually acquired by the bank, but it really represents a very different mindset on that aspect. Other financial institutions in Israel are also extremely open to innovation and if we'll take some example, Phoebe, the first international bank, ran an accelerator program within its premises, focusing firstly on cyber and then moving to other activities. Isracard, one of the largest credit card companies in Israel, launched a few years ago the first completely contactless payments service in Israel using your smartphone and the other credit card companies have basically uh, declared to follow suit quite frequently. So we are seeing that the financial institutions in Israel are very open. Now if we touch a bit on the global financial institutions that are arriving to Israel, many global players are coming here on the sense of either opening a technology lab, an accelerator program or an R&D practice. And to name the first pioneers that arrived here, City and Barclays, both arriving here in 2011, opening both of them, the three basically arms of innovation, their models have changed throughout the years as the market in Israel continued to advance, but they uh, were a very strong, su substantial part of building and developing the fintech ecosystem in Israel. JP Morgan arrived here in 2014, focusing on building its technology center and on developing its own application and development internally. And TD Bank also basically opened its innovation center, focusing also at the beginning at cyber technologies, moving onwards to other. And besides basically those leading companies, many others, dozens of global enterprises have opened their branches in here in Israel, moving and operating in all kinds of creative, I would say, innovative uh, digital labs, all in search for the amazing technologies that Israel has to offer. Now, if we'll take a closer look at the fintech equity investment taking place in 2019. So 2019 was a record year for Israeli startups, raising $1.8 billion dollars almost doubling the number of equity investment from 2019 and representing 5% of the global fintech investment taking place in that year globally. Now the median deal size was 10 million, which is an increase in, of 33% from the median deal size in 2019 and is higher in almost 80% from that number with startups in North America and in Europe. And as the industry in Israel continues to mature, we're seeing that basically a very small number of companies in Israel are responsible for raising that enormous amount. So almost only 12 Israeli companies have raised each more than $100 million this year, making them the $100 million club. And we're seeing that the industry is continuing to mature more and more. We're also seeing an increase in the fortune investors' activity in Israel that are keep on coming, keep on investing in Israel, either vis-a-vis -vis different funds, fund to fund, or through direct investment. And because the fintech industry is really booming and flourishing here, many Israeli VCs have either opened a specific tailored-made arm to be targeting fintech investment or expanded towards investing and expanding their fintech portfolio. Leading VCs being Viola Fintech, JVP, Aleph, Our Crowd, I Angels, and others. Now, the fourth pillar, which is very important to create such a flourishing, flourishing ecosystem in Israel, is the regulators' activities. So clearly, regulation is never easy, and unfortunately, in many cases, can also hinder the adoption of new technologies. But the regulators in Israel are extremely active and open and are working quite fiercely to open the market to innovation, both in the terms of basically enhancing competition and making it less centralized, and both in the sense of basically dictating to be working with third parties. Now, to mention three notable initiatives, first is basically the Strum regulation, which entered into force in 2017 and basically forced the banks that up until that point were basically holding the two largest credit card companies in Israel to sell their uh, basically ownership of those companies. And by that, from one hand, opening the entire payment market to more competition in Israel, and from the other, also forcing the credit card companies to be searching for new revenue streams. 
And as an example, just a few months ago, both the credit card companies in Israel have received an insurance company licensing, meaning that now the Israeli end consumer has more basically choices and alternatives to be choosing from. Second very important regulation that is being aggressively promoted by the Bank of Israel is the open banking. The Bank of Israel has decided to adopt the next generation Berlin standard for the open banking. Now, open banking, as we know, is a global movement that exists almost cross-global. Some countries are basically issuing their own legislations, others are adopting it willingly. And the Bank of Israel is very fiercely working on that, on the sense of A, setting up a very clear, detailed interface for the interaction and the integration of the traditional financial institutions within third parties vis-a-vis -vis defining their interfaces and from the other hand also defining quite carefully which information basket so to speak those traditional FSIs need to share with the new third parties in order to basically make sure that they indeed hold the most relevant information to provide basically the customers with new services and products. And the third aspect I'd like to mention is by the Israel Securities Authorities, which have issued a sandbox a few years ago, aiming at basically building a framework to make the collaboration between fintech companies and the regulator an easier one, and also to make their expenses during, the de during that journey and all of their uh, investment that they need to put in order to meet regulation standards an easier journey. So what does tomorrow bring? The financial service industry was one of the first industries to be very open to innovation, to be embracing their digital journey and to be actively and fiercely walking towards offering their clients a better experience. And I think that if you think for a minute about the way that you currently consume banking services and products and the way you used to consume them 10 years ago, there are very wide differences. I think that the fact that the world continues to change, even more so with COVID that has entered this year, is basically now pushing banks even much further than before to fiercely continue their journey and to basically be operating in a way that will enable not only for their customers to consume services and products, but also to basically enable the entire IT and back office operation to be managed almost completely digital or remotely. And for that, I think that we will continue to see much more focus on providing digital experience. We will see much more technologies and solutions that are targeting data analytics since now, even more than before, because everything is so being led and done digitally. There's basically a huge data trail which we can do a lot with. I think that we will see much more cloud migration to basically enable the enterprise to be an agile uh, organization that is able to basically retrieve the computational power on demand and as required. Like I said, we've touched about core modernization. Legacy systems need to be modernized. There's a very vast areas of solutions that are enabling to do that. And we're seeing financial institutions both globally and in Israel that are continuing this journey. I think that COVID has emphasized even much more than before the whole area around risks. Risk on the fact of once one chooses to invest within a company, risk on the sense of providing credit and loans, and even risks on the sense of insuring. How can insurance companies look at the day of tomorrow, given COVID and given you know, the entire, uh, the huge changes that we've seen in this year? I think that the platformification of banking, which is led almost solely by the open banking movement, will continue to rise. We will see much more collaboration between the traditional institutions, fintech, competitors and different kind of products. I think that everything will be much more focused on the customer journey versus being focused specifically on the consumption of specific products. And I think that we will see this ecosystem growing much further. And I think I'm still a strong believer in the blockchain technology. I think that blockchain, digital assets and cryptocurrency will continue to stay with us both in the sense of basically providing, I would say, the next generation of capital markets on the way that enables you to digitize different assets that, was, that were once unable to do, both on the sense of central banks now embracing a central bank digital currency for all kinds of purposes, and now more than 80% of central banks in the world today are already working on developing their own central bank digital currency, and both on the sense of developing different kinds of cryptocurrencies that will be relevant for different industries in different markets. So thank you for having me here. Do feel free to reach out with further issues and inquiries and looking forward to be meeting in person very soon. Ciao. Hi everyone, my name is Yves Cohen and I'm the CEO of Pageland, which specializes in frictionless banking and payments fraud prevention. Fintech has dramatically disrupted the financial services market with the way we buy, bank, transfer money, pay in store and online all shifting to cashless, cardless, and mobile. This growth also drives new types of sophisticated fraud attacks that are ineffectively addressed by the existing security solutions. And moreover, they negatively impact the user's experience.
PagerLint is designed for the new fintech era. It perfectly balances among preventing fraud from day one before the transaction occurs while enhancing the user's experience by reducing the friction which is associated with a transaction. And that's all done without impacting the user's experience or privacy. The solution is based on PagerLint's innovative six intelligence sets technology that takes into account all the aspects, the device identification, the user's behavior and others to reach a very accurate conclusion of whether the transaction is fraudulent or legitimate. With PagerLint, you benefit from all worlds, preventing fraud, enhancing your customer satisfaction, and reducing your operational cost. I welcome you to join the existing companies that benefit from PagerLint today, and I look forward to meeting you in person very soon. Thank you very much. Paykey redefines the mobile banking and payment experience by giving customers instant access to financial services through the mobile keyboard within any app. We work with banks, e-wallet providers, and other financial institutions to bring financial services to customers' everyday interactions on apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, Line, Viber, WeChat, and others, all through the keyboard. Customers can now simply tap the banking button in their keyboard to access a range of services like peer-to-peer -peer payments, cardless cash, withdrawals, loan requests, and more, without leaving the conversations on social and messaging apps. Our technology is already live with over 20 leading banks, including HSBC, Standard Chartered, NH Bank Korea, and others. We look forward to meeting you at our virtual booth to explore how Payki can help you drive engagement with your customers. Thank you. On December 2018, the Fed has announced an update of the US interest rate was an unexpected increase, which caused a strong bearish market response. I remember that my personal portfolio suffered an instant 5% dip, and I could actually predict this kind of response for these types of market events. We all have our favorite assets. We follow them, we know when they go up, when they go down, when to buy into them, and when to get out of them. What we cannot change is having limited resources of time. Inevitably, even though we can predict some of these situations, we cannot completely avoid them. But this doesn't have to be the norm, and we are here to change that. My name is Shahar, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Capitalized AI. Hi, in a world where everyone is talking about IT transformation, how has been the digital transformation journey for your company? If you're looking for efficiencies from a cost, labor and time to market perspective, we can help. Open Legacy is essentially an API factory that connects your legacy assets, whether it's IBM mainframes, AS400s, ERP systems, or databases directly to the digital layer. And they include the apps on your smartphones, the internet browser, and the cloud. And we do this with such efficiencies that we realize geometric savings from a time to creation, costs, as well as performance runtime perspectives. Open Legacy works with some of the biggest logos in the world, and they often include banking and insurance sectors. Here in Asia, we work with customers in Japan, Korea, and parts of Southeast Asia. We also have teams of people in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Tokyo to serve your needs. For more information about our company or our product, please visit our virtual booth or use the information in the slides to contact us. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to the Transmit booth. What do we do? Transmit provides a very modern approach to addressing the complexity, cost, and speed to market of managing all your identity projects, both the customer facing and the workforce use cases. The platform links all the elements of identity, authentication, authorization, fraud detection, risk, and trust models. With Transmit, decisioning and orchestration is done in configuration with low to no code using our drag and drop process. As you can see from the slide, managing a customer's identity journey and application is very complex. Apart from the challenges you already face, we're happy to write thousands of lines of code to integrate the identity stack, code to invoke compliant and risk-aware journeys. You're also having to face dealing with multiple silos, legacy systems, 
inconsistent user experiences and actual developer risk. The business owners are constantly requesting to have new capabilities to the app to change the customer's journey, perhaps of a new fraud vector, a risk attack or a new compliance mandate. So what we do at Transmit is replace all these thousands of lines of complex code in a drag and drop process. You quite simply plug in the engines, configure and play. From a business perspective, this means you can get to market 10 times faster, more securely, more functionality and a great customer user experience. Please do call me for a chat or to see a live demo. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Ellie Pohl and I'm the Global Director of Events and Community at Glassbox. Glassbox is a world-leading digital customer experience solution. We deliver true CX by allowing our customers to uncover 360-degree insights of every user journey across their digital channels. Our goal is to help our customers and our ever-growing community exceed their organization's online needs. And I'm proud to say we deliver nearly 1 trillion frictionless digital journeys for them each year. We understand fintech with over 300 customers and counting, among which you'll find global brands such as SoFi, Bank of America, Citibank, Santander, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citizens Bank, and many more. Whether you're looking to tune up your omni-channel strategy, reveal hidden lines of business, discuss a deep dive into mobile, or you're simply just curious to learn more about the trends and solutions others within our community are utilizing to streamline their own digital interactions, we'd love to have a chat with you. I'd like to formally invite you to join me alongside the Glassbox team to swing by our booth to learn more, only at HK Fintech Week. See you there. Hi everyone, my name is Leo Lamesh and I'm the co-founder and CEO of GK8 and this is why you should come to meet me in our virtual booth. Banks that entering into the blockchain space are facing two main challenges. The first one is how to integrate blockchain financial services to the traditional systems. And the second one is how to do it in a secure way, avoiding hacking events. GK8 is a cybersecurity company that solves them both. We designed an end-to-end -end platform that enable banks to offer financial services, including custody, digital assets management, and way more, in a way that enable them to create new sources of revenue. We bring a radically new approach of blockchain cybersecurity by providing the first true air-gapped vault that enable banks to create the whole process of communication with the blockchain, including creating, signing, and sending blockchain transactions without the need for being connected to the internet at all. As long as you are not connected to the internet, you are not exposed to any cybersecurity attack vectors, and that's why your digital assets will always be secure. We have clients today that are managing over $1 billion in digital assets, including banks, exchanges, and custodians, for example, eToro, amongst others. I invite you to join our booth today in order to meet me and hear more. Thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to meeting you today. Leo.